Imagine it's the year 2024 and four people are launching into outer space for a journey to Mars. It may sound like science fiction, but a private European nonprofit called Mars One wants to send four people to form the first human settlement on the Red Planet. One big catch, though, once they've landed, they will likely never be able to return to Earth. On Mars, they would live in pods like these for the rest of their lives and star in an interplanetary reality TV show. That's the idea, anyway. Many are skeptical that this will ever happen. And yet, over 200,000 wannabe space travelers from across the globe applied to the program, with just over 1,000 making the first round cut. Lauren Reeves and Hugh Now are two of those chosen to move on. So, Hugh, what makes you want to go to Mars knowing you're going to be leaving everything and everyone you love behind? I've been fascinated with Mars my entire life, and I see it sort of as the final frontier, or at least the next frontier. In our country's history, there's always been a new frontier, and lately I think that uh, we haven't had so much of exploration. This is a project that will captivate the world, um, everybody in it. Lauren, what do your family and friends think about this? Do they think you're nuts? Um, well, they already thought I was nuts to start with, <laughs> so I don't think anyone's surprised that I applied to go to Mars forever. You know, they're like, oh, that's a thing Lauren would definitely do. Uh, and I think it's one of those things where right now it doesn't seem real. And even to me, you know, I forget, oh, I might be going to Mars. Hugh, this training process will last nine years. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the best attribute you'll bring? Mars One aims to bring lay people astronauts from all over the world, which is going to involve a lot of different cultures and working across cultural lines uh, to get a common task taken care of is not something that everybody is good at. And it's something that I in my line of work have had quite a bit of experience with and um, it's going to be a very necessary attribute. What do you do? I'm a special agent with the U.S. State Department. So I'm both a federal law enforcement officer and a foreign service officer. And Lauren, what do you do? I'm a comedian. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this journey to Mars is supposed to take seven months. Mm -hmm. You'll be in a confined space with three other people if you get selected. How do you get along with people? Do you get along with people? I feel like I get along with people fine as long as they don't talk to me. <laughs> no, um, I think it depends. You know, if you're going to Mars forever with just three other people, you want to make sure that they're people you get along with. You know, you don't want to be stuck in, in another planet with people that you're like, oh my God, I'm going to kill you. If you two were going to Mars together, what would you want to know about each other before you were stuck if you're a serial killer. <laughs> I'm not a serial killer. I, <laughs> See, that's a wow, typical I, I would just want to know if response. you're a clean person. <laughs> a clean person? Yeah. Are you a clean person? I think so. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> so, Hugh, some scientists think that this trip to Mars could be an extremely risky endeavor. Once you get there, you'd be living in a confined space, no blue sky, no earthly comforts. So doesn't that frighten you at all? Yes, it, it will very much scare me. Um, it does scare me. And um, it's sort of something that is kind of hard to fathom right now. It's, it's something that I can't really comprehend in full. Mm -hmm. um, but it's something that we're going to have to deal with when we get there because there won't be another way. Mm -hmm. Does it frighten you? Um, I guess it doesn't really frighten me. You know, you do risky things in life, and we're all going to die at some point. I think it'd be a better story if I died on Mars. So the Mars One Project will largely be funded by a reality program about the settlers on Mars. And these settlers will probably be the biggest reality stars in the history of the planet, the planets. <laughs> uh, how are you guys ready for that kind of exposure, Lauren? Um, yeah, I mean, I had a reality show on for the last couple years. I feel like I've been exposed to, um, you know, being on camera and having people watch your life and think that they know mm. you. Um, so I don't think it's really going to change anything. We're going to be on Mars. It's not like people right. are going to be rushing over for our autograph, you know. Right, right. <laughs> Is it kind of a bummer that if you're there and you're the biggest stars in the whole world that you don't get to reap those benefits? Well, nothing about this is for fame, uh, for me. Fame is something that's going to come with it, I suppose, um, and that's great, but my focus is on the mission and, and everything right. else. Uh, whatever else comes with it on the side is just something that... I'm going to try to put out of mind because I'm not really ready to be famous. And Lauren, you, well, you're ready to be famous, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> why not? I, I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lauren Reeves, Hugh Now, we hope to see you on Mars one day. Thanks. Hope so. Thanks.